Hey everyone, welcome to the Florida Writers Books Festival. Um, my name is Rick Betancourt and I am the president of Florida Writers Association. And today I have the honor of having NL Holmes with me and we're just gonna chat for a little bit to uh, talk about her books and her, her writing. Um, NL Holmes is a trained archeologist and she writes historical fiction set in antiquity. Mm. She lives in Florida and, and in Northern France, where she gardens, weaves, dances, and plays the violin. Violin, And of course, she reads. Excellent. Well, welcome. Uh, and do you go by NL or Nikki? Is that? Nikki's fine. Nikki's fine. Awesome. Well, welcome, Nikki. How are you this morning? Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> we, we, had a, we had some, t some <laughs> technical issues with, with the uh, cameras and mics, so I, we apologize for for being delayed, but we're now here. So excellent, excellent. So, so, um, so tell me uh, a little bit about your, your writing journey and your, in your, your writing. Well, I, I didn't actually begin producing novels until I retired from teaching, but like many writers, I had always been interested in books. And uh, as a child used to write novels you know with my cousin and sometimes i even finished one <laughs> but um for the most part it's been academic writing and uh -huh. copywriting in one job or another so Fun. uh it wasn't yeah. until four years ago five years ago that i actually began okay finishing okay. novels and getting yeah started. yeah yeah finishing a novel it's it's quite the uh Quite the experience to finally put the end, or or to, to finally get it published. So, so what's your? Uh, tell us about your latest novel. Well, my most recent one was the Sun at Twilight, which is part of the uh, Empire at Twilight series. It takes place in uh, ancient Turkey, which at that point was the Hittite Empire. Uh huh. Uh, the nicest little empire no one's ever heard of. <laughs> um, uh, but they were rivals with Egypt. I mean, they were very powerful. And it's about a young king who comes to the throne as the son of Herper, so feeling very insecure about his legitimacy. And he has to make some pretty painful uh, decisions in conscience in order to um, remain virtuous and, and ethical and please the gods and all of this, including giving up his dearest friends. And so mm -hmm. uh, it's... It's not a mystery. I usually write mysteries, but this is just a sort of. Oh, we lost you there for a second. Can you still hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a delay. So I'm always interested in people's writing ex, um, experience and like the the process of writing. Can you tell me a little bit about like what, how you go about? Do you plan your novels? Do you uh, you know, what's, what's your, your, your writing process like? Well, I, I had the luxury of starting one or more real historical events, so that's, that's an idea. Yep. <laughs> and I tried um, plotting, and it was excruciating. I, I, I yeah. thought I was going to die. So <laughs> from then on, I realized I was a pantser, and this is the way to go. <laughs> yeah. Even the sort of complex plot of history is just... It works so much better for me. So I uh, I settle on my camera, get them fixed in my mind and let them become real to me. Yep. And put them in that historical moment and see where they go. That's 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 interesting. I I, I sort of dance between that I, I call it discovery writing now instead of pantsing versus um, versus outlining because it's to your point, you know, when you're when you outline, you can get so hung up in, in the details and you don't know all the details. But um, sometimes having a little bit of a plan and, and to your point, having this historical background, you, know, you sort of have that as a structure, at least to, to be able to, to play upon. So that's that's cool. And Do I you, also, you know, I make notes um, usually by hand and yeah. things that occur to me, scenes that I want to include or. Yeah. Things and what like do you that. use for, do you use Word or do you use Scrivener or what's your? I use um, uh, LibreOffice, which is, oh. I think it's French, but they yeah. can save documents in Word. Okay. 
Okay. I just find it more user-friendly user interface. Yeah, yeah. I, I've recently found a, a software, not that I'm <laughs> promoting it by any means, but it's called Plotter, P-L-O-T-R-R. -R. And it's more for outlining than it is for writing your actual novel, but um, it, I find it very helpful to, it, it's sort of like a Scrivener where you can have your characters and pictures of your characters and have these notes and whatnot. And, but I, I've always, always used Word. Do you have a, a time of day that you prefer to write? Well, no, um, I, I get up very early. So, you know, I tend to start <laughs> writing by about 4.30 or something, but yeah. uh, the day brings interruptions generally. But if yeah. I'm alone, say in France with no one around and the weather's bad, I can't work in the garden, I can write the whole day if I'm, you know, if I'm with it. Sometimes yeah. it just, <laughs> I have to go away frequently, but <laughs> other times it seems to flow. And Yeah. Interesting. So what, what part of, oh, go ahead. Sorry. And there was a, we're getting these like little five second delays. Yeah, I'm getting them too. Yep. Must be our internet connection. What um what part of France? It's in the northwest. It's just south of Normandy and east of, of um, Brittany. So it's not a very touristical area. Just a yeah, fun. very country. Yeah, and you're in, and then you're in um, uh, in in Florida as well. So you're in Florida now or France? I'm in Florida. Nice, nice, cool, cool, awesome. So. Um, so you like to write in the morning. You're uh, 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 you're kind of a pantser. What 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 are some some of your um, what's inspired you to to write? I I have always loved it, so it would be hard to point to a moment um, when I suddenly mm -hmm. wanted to to write. My aunt was a book editor of a local paper. My father wrote short stories for Boys Life magazine yeah. and stuff like that. So it was always something that was, you know, a possibility for everyone in the family. Mm -hmm. I guess it was not until um, an episode in my classroom a year or two before I retired, where we I was giving the students an, an exercise, uh, gave them several ancient documents. This is all we know about a certain event. Tell me what happened. You know that sort of thing. Yeah. and it was pretty quickly apparent that anything you could say was as much fiction as historiography. So yeah. I thought, yeah. hey, this is where the novel swings into action. Yeah, I was just I was just taking a look at your your uh, your covers, and for Bird in the Snare, it's the, the, a Lord a Lord Haney mystery. So that's your sort of series. Yeah. Beautiful covers, beautiful covers. I love the, uh, I, I love how they're they're branded because you can even tell that they're all part of a series and that they're that they're um, they're very well done. Love that. Yeah, I, I'm really fortunate. Someone recommended this uh, Streetlight Graphics to me, and I've been very pleased. They can format the books too. So. Yeah, yeah. Now, have you have you self published or are you with a with a publisher? I, I ended up self-publishing because I had an agent early on and mm -hmm. we didn't see eye to eye about some things that were kind of important to me. So I broke off with her and then I thought, I don't want to spend more. By that time I had six or seven novels piled up. I have nice. to find another agent. They have to shop them around and then they're not going to publish them more rapidly than one year. So it's just the time frame didn't fit my, uh, my age and temperament. Yeah, uh, good for you. And did you do the a rapid release sort of strategy, or? Yes, yeah, because I had so many backlogs. Yeah, well, I, I probably anticipate two a year at the moment. You know, two a year. So okay, okay. I've got another one coming out in in mid June. Nice. And then, do you have? Um, I'm always curious about people's sort of marketing strategy, especially when they're when they're self published. Mm -hmm. What do you? How do you promote your books or other than, other than this, this platform here? Well, this is similar to some of the things I do. I mean, I, I hired a publicist and I've, I've gotten a lot of uh, radio and podcast interviews, which is nice. Yeah, it's loads of fun too. <laughs> uh, but I've also advertised 
you know, book Bob and Amazon and, and uh, every month I do a promotion for a couple of days. And so I get on all the, the book, um, you know, the, the interest, book interest uh, website. Sure. Yeah, like book doggy and things like that. There's a whole yeah. A feature every uh, every month on one mm -hmm. book. That has been difficult though because I have so many out at once that I'm trying to publicize. It's it's overwhelming, frankly. And if somebody offered to come along and take that off my off my shoulders, I'd probably jump at it. Yeah. But on and the other hand, you know, you have a lot more control over the process. When you're doing yeah. That. Yeah. And what about a mailing list? Do you have a mailing list, like a MailChimp or any, do you do any of that we stuff? We're organizing one right now. So if anybody wants to get on that list, um, oh, look on my website. And, and that oh, and what, and www.com. You broke and, uh, up. There will be a, sorry? You broke up a little bit. Let's repeat oh, your website. So okay. Uh, it, it will be listed on my website, www nlholmes.com and there, there will be a link there to sign okay. up okay excellent excellent yeah because we found we found that that can be a great getting a really strong mailing list can be such a a, a game changer sometimes when you're releasing when you're releasing books excellent excellent um what do you like you mentioned in your bio that you like to read but what do you what are some of your favorite genres and authors and stories? Oh well, well I, I'll read any genre except possibly romance. But I've re I've actually read some some good ones too. Yeah. It's just not kind of my thing. But I I love uh, literary fiction, uh -huh. and I'd have to say that some of my favorite authors are people like Elizabeth Stroud and Louise Erdrich. Um, I love the nineteenth century realists, American and and English and French and um, I guess it, Jeremy Nile by Zola is my favorite book of all time. It's, it's so powerful, I can never get those images out of my head. It's, I think it's success. Uh, I like historical fiction, obviously, and uh, Mary Renault, of course, is the classic there. And I love uh, I love cozy mysteries and any kind of mysteries. I've just discovered Tana French. What a wonderful writer. I'm just so glad I made her acquaintance. Um, I love them. She writes beautiful. Nice. So I'm pretty much, and I like fantasy too. I haven't read them for a while uh, mm -hmm. because they all started sounding alike to me. But but in theory, I like them, and, and people like Elaine and um, Taylor and things. Are yeah, it's so it's so important to have a, a good reading mix, and I like how you how you, you you're not just reading historical fiction. You know, you're mm -hmm. reading fantasies. You're reading cozy mysteries and it's it's so important to sort of blend all of that into your into your writing and it really makes you a stronger a stronger writer what what sort of advice would you have for somebody who might be starting out as wanting to write or ha hasn't finished their novel what sort of advice would you give folks like that well i guess the cardinal virtue is perseverance it's, it's effort from beginning to end yeah. Um, inspiration is one thing, but perspiration is most of it. So, true, true, uh, very just, true. Just getting through a novel length piece of writing takes a lot of, of determination. And yeah. then the hard part starts, you know, seeking an agent, this and that. If you have a professional editor, which I highly recommend, then there's the revisions. And uh, it's, it's not an easy way to make a living, let's put it that way. No, no, no. Plus, you have to have a tough skin. Very true. Very true. And uh, I often say that I'm a, I am edit more than I write. It's like, I'm, I'll, true, true. I'm like oh, gosh, I just wrote this. Is you really write great. once, but you may go through the manuscript a hundred times. Exactly. Exactly. It's like, what did I, what was I thinking when I wrote this? This is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Your own worst critic sometimes. I, I have. Had that experience so, seen it twice. <laughs> I know. I know, just just all of the all the the minutia. So so you mentioned um, uh, sort of you know it, it's tough to make a living in it. So are, are you are you finding book sales your book sales stronger with your with each with each release or? 
I think it does take time to build up. And I, I really can't complain considering no one's ever heard of me. You know, it's, uh, I'm doing okay. I'm almost uh, covering my publicity costs. Nice. <laughs> but I think the advantage for me is that I have eight mm -hmm. books. And if you only had one, it would be much more difficult. Yeah. But then, you could, then you could publicize that one more with more intensity. So yeah, I'll start someplace. Yeah, and, and yeah, that's why I like your your series approach, and your I find that that's so important, and and your, your the way you have them all branded, like you get people sort of hooked on that first book, and then they want to get the second one, and then they want to get the third one, they can't wait for the fourth one to be released, yeah. and then and uh, and and then you know having that sort of sales funnel really of with your with your mailing list, and then you just sort of grow that. And, other so you mentioned you did some advertising what where were what when you said book bub have you had any experience with like amazon ads or facebook ads or yes i i do uh haven't done facebook ads yet although i have a facebook page mm -hmm. but um amazon i i advertise regularly and um what's the other one? No, book bub. and that's um that's pretty expensive. Uh, it, it depends, yeah. If you have, you know, if you have a large number of books up at one time, mm -hmm. but I keep hoping that it will, um, it will, you know, make itself worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah. I actually find that the day, the days of the month when I run a, a ninety-nine cent pro promotion on something, I'll bring in the sales, you know, extravagantly. Although yeah. I don't make that much money. Yeah. But it's it's something that I guess keeps people. In there interested in, in looking so yeah yeah and then if you get into the uh, the strategy of of sort of promoting that first book and even though it may be 99 cents or free or something then the sort of follow through on that you get people hooked on the second one and the That's third what I'm and then it's already happening yeah and you know that may not it's hard to kind of quantify in your in your sale in your marketing costs but it it, it definitely definitely grows so so what's on what's next for 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 you well i as i say i have another book coming out in june um and it's a it's the, oh, so you it's broke up. Um, lake oh I, it's the fifth book of the lord honey series that's coming okay. out in june uh it's called lake flowers lake flowers lake, lake of flowers lake of flowers Nice title. I know. It's, it's it's a quote from the Book of the Dead. It's wow. got some great quotes. <laughs> yeah. So that that will be coming out. It's I'm just editing now. It's just came back from editing, so I'm working on it. Uh, and then beyond that, I'm I'm working in, in a remote stage on several other books. Um, a book in the Lord Honey series, and I have. Just sort of beginnings on uh, two more of the Sun at Twilight series. So never a dull moment. Wow, it's, it sounds sounds like you're very very busy in your your post teaching career. <laughs> yes, career. this has turned out not to be retirement. So. I know, right? Yeah, change business. That's all. Yeah, good for you. Well, this has been this has been awesome. It's been awesome talking to you. I could talk to you for forever. Uh, you've got you've got some great great series you get great books there's if people can check out your your booth on the florida writers book expo they can download the oh the red scarf is that is that a um tell us a oh, little it's a short it's a flash fiction it's just a flash right. nice nice all right well we can get a taste of your books on the uh, book expo booth in your booth and click links to get hooked on your series and i think i'm gonna go check them out they sound really fun Awesome. Awesome. All right, Nikki. Well, it's been great chatting with you. Um, best of luck in your, in your authoring career and in your new, in your new uh, endeavors. Thanks. It's been fun. All right. We'll talk soon. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye.